Um, what I'm going to do now is we're going to jump over to the sequencer and it's going to come back to, talk, to talking about this, um, the kernel um, oscillators. Um, but we didn't look at the sequencer last week and I think it's a, a pretty cool sequencer. Um, so if you press sequencer over here, um, what we have with this sequencer is I think it's up to 32 steps. You can turn each step on and off. You can record notes into it. Um, you can have note sequencing, velocity sequencing, and then up to eight, oh, gate sequencing, and then up to eight parameters that you can freely assign to whatever you want, okay? Um, so one little quirk that I've learned with this, um, with this instrument is that by default, it doesn't actually um, respond to velocity. Why, I don't know, um, but you have to set it up. So there's a, you can see over here, there's a little layer button, if I press layer, this, little knob, this little um, parameter here, amp velocity amount. If I press that, you can go positive or negative. I'm just going to make that full, which means that the velocity values that are being sent to it are actually going to determine the amplitude. Okay, cool. So we go back to the sequencer and I've latched it and I'll, I'll just press go and it's going. Cool. Let's add some notes. The velocity of each note. So each hit, because we're on the on the sequencer, the velocity of each note is going to change the volume. Okay. That's just a four-note sequence. Let's actually make the. Um, this is chromatic at the moment. We said that we liked Phrygian, so. Okay. The ARP's not running anymore. We're doing sequencing. So if all I, the other steps are still on? all the steps are on, yeah. But it sounds like it sounds like you got articulation because of our sample and hold modulation. Right. All right, let's turn the sample and hold modulation off. Are we following? It's com complex. Let's turn the modulation off. So LFO one is no longer affecting our K one. Go back to the sequencer. Not hearing any pitch change. Why is that? Why aren't we hearing any pitch change? That's weird. Is uh, K2 fixed and level of... Good question. Yeah. Let's have a look. No, K... Uh, okay, one is... Ah, smart man. Ooh. Okay. All right. So actually, K... Thank you. K1 should be... our fixed, right? K2 should be a ratio. And once it's a ratio, then it will respond to pitch changes. Okay. Thanks, man. Sounded better before. <laughs> Let's change the octave. Can okay, we get back to the sequencer? So there's our. All right, let's put the modulation back in. Now I talked about velocity, so let's go in here. So we're in notes mode at the moment. Ah, oh, let's give it a couple of rests. All right, so velocity. So at the moment, so if we put them all the way down, no sound. Okay, so now we can create a velocity curve. One thing I wish that the sequencer had is the different parameters, notes, velocities, and gates and things like that had different lengths that you could change. Um, that's a kind of classic thing that I do with sequencers a lot. It doesn't, so they're all fixed to each other. So the accents that we have here with our velocity are always gonna come at the same point as the notes that we've got. Let's change these notes. Um, okay, so we can record. So let's press record here. I've got um, this set up as Phrygian. Yes, I do. So we'll go back to the sequencer. So we're gonna record. Uh, 
I mean, it's going platinum. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, uh, is it still recording? No. Ah, uh, latch, sorry. That's pretty cool, right? What I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to add another slide. Okay, so we've got K1 modulating K2. Let's add another one. Okay, so we go to K3. What we need to determine is where K3 is in the patch in the mix. Okay, so we're going to go to the, our mod and we're going to say what is the the source um, of K3. First of all, we're going to say let's go out. Okay, so you can see on the patch that K3's got no modulation, but it's going out. All right. Now we're going to say its source is also mod 1. Okay, K1. All right. Cool. But what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to change its waveform to be a wavetable. All right. I'm going to change the wavetable. And then we can play with... K3 level. Let's go back to K1. I might change the sustain so that we can hear it. Or K1 level. Ah, oh, it's off, sorry. So remember, with this particular patch, K1 is the only modulator, right? And so what we're doing is we're using a, a, um, a sample and hold to change that level. And as a result, what it's doing is it's going to change the modulation of K2, which is just a sine wave, as well as K3 now. Okay, so we've got a bit of room to move in terms of um, timbre. We can decide to modulate. Um, the level of K3 against K2 if we want to, or change its timbre now that we're actually working with a wave table. Yeah. Are these all like stereo waveforms? Yeah, they can be. If you pan a modulator, yep. will it uh, affect the thing it's modulating differently on each channel? Because it's good question. Good, good question, good question. I haven't tried that. What I usually do is I pan the, the things that are going out, right? The, 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 the carriers. So we can do that really easily. Um, so K2 is panned, and now K3 is panned. Okay. So let's have a listen to that first, and then we'll do your... Can you hear that with? Let's try what you suggested. Yep. Let's solo K3. So K3 is the one that's on the right, so it's still getting modulation. So I think that maybe the modulator itself just sends straight to the oscillator regardless of the panning. Because there's probably not a, a stereo stage there. Yes, yes, I think that's I think that's what it is. But it lets you say that you're Yeah, it lets you say that you're panning. And the reason for that is that you can actually set um, K1 to go out as well, right? Yeah. You can send any level. It would have been actually, yeah. You can modulate the panning, which changes the how much it, uh, it affects it. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. All right, so let's have let's have a think though. If we were to solo solo K three now, let's choose a let's have a look. So we've got our waveform right, and if I were to change the position, yeah, it's showing the harmonics. 
you can just... I think you can just do it with the... So that's awesome. Okay, I want to modulate that, that in two ways. So the first, th first way I'm going to do it is we're going to go into our... Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to go into the patch and in the controls. Let's say the top left. It's destination. If I want to change the wavetable position of kernel number three, as we go kernel three, wavetable position, maximum amount. Thank you. Uh, kernel three, wavetable position. All right, awesome. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and so we're going to call this whatever. Okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> so let's. So now I've gone top left. All right, so things are getting pretty interesting pretty fast. Let's go to our sequencer and we use parameter one, which is a freely assignable parameter. Do them some things. Mod targets, add, destination, fidget, 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 which will be under K1. Fidget, 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 fidget. Okay, so now this sequence. is affecting that wavetable position. Pretty awesome. All right. And then there's eight different parameters that you can use, right? We've only used three operators, and this is like one of the simplest algorithms. We've got two carriers, one modulator, different waveforms with a bit of different modulation, but we've already got complexity, okay? Which is fantastic. Um, you, can, you can see how far down the rabbit hole you can go.